It's now my pleasure to introduce our Chief Officer of Community Engagement and Diversity, Dr. Margaret Spearman, who will introduce our keynote speaker. I am thrilled and deeply honored to introduce this year's amazing keynote speaker, Ijima Oluo. A city, yes. A Seattle writer, feminist, activist, and internet yeller. If this last descriptive phrase did not give you a sense of her candid and courageous presence on web-based media, then nothing will. Ijima embodies that rare ability to be straightforward, brutally honest, yet humorous as she addresses some of the most sensitive and charged topics in America today. Race, identity, feminism, oppression, social justice. Earlier this year, Ijima published the book, So You Want to Talk About Race. It was praised from coast to coast and received outstanding reviews from outlets as diverse as Harper's Bazaar to Jezebel and Exo Jane, and is on both of the New York Times and Wall Street Journal bestseller list. Her book is an accessible, intelligent, and candid look at race in contemporary America, addressing head-on such issues as privilege, police brutality, Black Lives Matter, she answers the questions that most readers are afraid to ask, but that must be addressed honestly and courageous if we are to move forward as a community and a nation. Even before the book came out earlier this year, Seattle Magazine had named Ijima one of the most influential people in Seattle, calling her one of Seattle's strongest voices for social justice. Seattle Met Magazine listed her as one of the top 50 influential women in Seattle for 2018. Born in Denton, Texas, Ijima's father was from Nigeria and her mother from Kansas. She grew, in, she grew up in Linwood, Washington and received her BA in political science in 2007 from Western Washington University. After graduation, she joined the tech world and started a food blog to nurture her more creative side. But she found that writing about food was unfulfilling. She repurposed her blog and began to using social media to talk about issues closer to her heart, oppression, race, and social justice. Today, she is editor at large of the establishment a media platform written for and funded by women. She is also the author of the first and second volumes of the badass feminist coloring book. Maybe being the mother of two boys helped fuel that particular project. <laughs> Ijima, your amazing talent and courage are an inspiration to us all. We are so delighted you could come be with us today. Everyone, please join me in giving a warm welcome to our 2018 School of Social Work graduation keynote speaker, Ijima Aluo. Wow, you've done it. You have made it through one of the most rigorous and respected schools of social work in the country. Years of hard work and dedication have brought you to this point. I am proud of you. I'm proud to be able to speak to you today. I hope that you take time tonight to reflect on the amazing things that you've accomplished. I hope you take time today to breathe and laugh and smile. You've done amazing work, and it's just the beginning. I get asked a lot as a writer on social justice issues who I look to for inspiration. Most people expect my answer to be a few well-known authors or a few lesser-known authors for extra cool points. 
But the people I usually talk about are social workers. I'm not making this up because it sounds nice on the stage in front of hundreds of current and future social workers. <laughs> I talk about my friend who works with male survivors of child sex abuse, helping them find strength, healing, and the resources they need to heal from the harm done to them and break cycles of violence. I talk about my friend Jamila, who fights every day to keep queer and transgender undocumented immigrants out of life-threatening detention. The social workers I know dedicate their lives to this very hard and often very underpaid, sorry, and underappreciated work. My friends wake up every morning and battle a system that wants to lock their clients in cycles of poverty, illness, and violence. My friends wake up every morning and know that even though they will never have plaques dedicated to their service, even though nobody will ever throw them a parade, they are saving lives. They also wake up every morning with grief for those who they could not save. You now have the great privilege of the ability to make a real, lasting impact on many lives. You now have the great privilege of the ability to advocate with and for those who need it most. You now have the great privilege of the ability to help break cycles of poverty, violence, illness, and depression. And not to get all Uncle Ben on you all, but with great power comes great responsibility. And before you are sent off to your very well-deserved celebrations, let me do what I do best, inject some depressing reality into your day. A few weeks ago, I was in Ferguson, Missouri. I spent an afternoon in the middle school that Michael Brown, the unarmed teenager who was shot and killed by cops in 2014, once attended. I met with a few dozen of the most wonderful kids you could ever hope to meet. Well, I met with them after the 10 minutes it took me to get through the metal detector at the entrance of the school. I stood behind a grandfather who was waiting to pick up one of his grandkids. The kids in front of us were giggling as they emptied their pockets for the officer. The officer was annoyed with them for taking so long. You all know how this goes. Stop wasting time, she said. The grandfather in front of me turned to me and shook his head and said in quiet grief and outrage, these are our babies. And these were beautiful babies. They were funny, kind, bright, creative, these kids made me laugh and think as they asked me questions that make NPR interviewers seem boring and lacking in vision. They told me about their dreams for their futures. They laughed and poked fun at each other. Sitting in this failed school, a school whose accreditation had been stripped for failing to properly educate these amazing kids, they told me that they wanted to own their own businesses or be teachers or writers one day. They also talked about how they were accused of stealing when they stopped for lunch on their last field trip, how the clerk at the sandwich shop threatened to call the police on these black kids, even though their teacher was right there vouching for them. They told me about how a week later a few of them walked into a candy store to buy treats. When they walked up to the register to pay and one of the boys reached in for his wallet, the cashier pepper sprayed him in the face thinking that they were there to rob her. One of the kids chuckled and said, look at him, what's he gonna do? He's like five feet tall. Another student joked that this was why her mom tells her to carry around bail money. I left that school and drove to the local university. Before my speaking engagement, I met with a smaller group of black students. They were all either social work students or criminal justice students. I asked them why they had chosen these fields of study. I was expecting them to profess deep beliefs in truth and justice, a lifeline commitment to helping others. But the first answer I got was, because my brother was locked away in the system for the rest of his life, and the people who were supposed to help him didn't. And 
because I lost all of my cousins, an aunt, and two brothers to violence and addiction. A young man who was getting ready to finish his master's in social work looked me in the eye and said, because a social worker destroyed my family. These young people did not choose their path because they wanted to, or even because they felt called to. They were brought down this path because they had been failed in devastating ways. And they had to do something to help make sure that the next person like them wouldn't lose their families, their homes, or their lives to the shortcomings of our system. These young, a young black man displaced by Hurricane Katrina talked to me about how hard it was to sit in class and hear discussion of case studies of people just like him, to hear his life boiled down to statistics and to hear the results of the same oppression and devastation he'd experienced be criminalized and pathologized. His classmates and his professors didn't know that he had been homeless all throughout his undergrad studies. They didn't know that he hadn't seen his siblings or his mother in the decades since someone decided that his family couldn't be saved. I still do not know if they actually wanted to be social workers. I do not know if perhaps they had not experienced such devastating loss if perhaps they had received the help and care they needed, if they would have nurtured a passion for art, music, accounting. They are entering their fields knowing the immense responsibility of their work in the most devastating way. And I hope to impart some of that responsibility on you as well, hopefully without the trauma of having to learn the way that they did. I can only hope that as they bear the great responsibility of the knowledge of what can go wrong, that they will get to experience the unparalleled satisfaction and joy to be found when it goes right. And I wish the same for you as well. I wish for you the look of immense relief on a single mother's face when she learns that she will be able to put a roof over her family's head. I wish for you the victory of being able to pull a scare, scared queer youth out of detention. I wish for you the pride in seeing people gain freedom from addiction using the resources that you help them get. I wish you the joy in being able to get resources, tools, security, safety, and independence for those who need it most. I wish all of that and more for you. And I wish you plaques in your honor and parades celebrating your victories. But until the world is able to fully appreciate the very important work that you are going to do, I hope that you will at least accept my thanks. Thank you for choosing this work. Thank you for choosing it with the love and care that I know you will show. Thank you for accepting this immense responsibility. Thank you for all of the good you will be able to do. Now go celebrate and then go be heroes.